everybody, welcome back. This is our, our show on red wines from Costco, as well as some of their cheeses, what goes good with it, and some salmon as well. And uh, we, we, we've got three cool wines today. Absolutely, yes. And again, Costco does it right. We've got a Pinot from Carneros, a Malbec from the Mendoza region, and a Bordeaux from Bordeaux. So we'll be going into those and tasting them and pairing them with our cheeses and also the salmon. What's so cool about Costco wines is what you just said before. They do it right. They go to the right regions. They go to the best vintners. And at the same time, too, they keep their markups low so that these great wines are affordable. Exactly. Yeah. And the first one we're going to try, Pinot Noir, for an example, they got this from Carneros. Personally, I think Carneros is the best place in the United States to grow Pinot Noir grapes. Um, a lot of people grow them and they try to grow them. They do not turn out well because Pinot is a very picky, picky grape and you can only grow it in very certain climates, very limited climates. So um, they've got it from the perfect place to get Pinot from. So I'm excited to try this and we're gonna do something a little different, changing it up, being rebellious like undercover jet setters do. We're gonna have the salmon with the Pinot. Mm, okay. So it just shows you, you can drink a white with a steak and you can drink a red with fish. Oops, Perfect. No, we're breaking all the rules here. Uh, we're big rule breakers here, I guess. Yes, well that's what we like to do. Is it sacrilegious for me to call it a Pinot more? Because I do call it that every now and then and it gets people well, talking anyway. Well, you know, I'm um, just not going to comment on that actually. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but and is it true? Is let it you true, do though, what you like to do. And <laughs> but but let's let's talk seriously because a lot of Pinots have gone sideways. Oh gosh. Uh, okay. Well, he's bringing that up because I have a pet peeve. So the movie Sideways it's is what too, created the Pinot glut, and everybody in the world started growing Pinot grapes who shouldn't have been growing Pinot grapes. Because in the movie, they talk about Merlot being bad and Pinot being the best thing in the world. So, of course, all the people try to capitalize on growing Pinot grapes, and they had no business doing that. And so, for a while there, we had some really dreadful Pinot Noirs. And the funny thing was, Merlot actually got really good again. <laughs> so, people went back to getting and making great Merlots because we had before that a Merlot where just out of the blue, people discovered Merlot. It's such a drinkable wine. Yeah. And when you have a great Merlot, it, it blends really well with other grapes. And But on its own, it's so smooth and silky and chocolatey. And so... Now, you know, that being said, we're not drinking Merlot tonight. No, we're, well, we're not actually, but we did see a Merlot at Costco, so... Yes you can pick it up there too. So now we're gonna try this. This actually smells absolutely phenomenal. This is good. It's actually got a little effervescence to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and I think uh, it's kind of interesting. Pinots do have that because the Pinot grape is what's used to make champagnes, so, or sparkling wines. This is fabulous. It's this delicious. This to me, I, I, I can see where it's gonna go good with the salmon. This mm -hmm. would go great with a lamb. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, great with lamb. I would put it with pork too. Um, a lot of great cheeses. You know, I mean, it's 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 a very drinkable wine, and you can actually have Pinot as a sipping wine. I mean, it's just it's so smooth, yeah. and mm. I use the word silky for Merlot, but Pinot is silky too. You know, and it just has that different flavor that you can't really get. I don't think any other grape tastes like a Pinot. So if you've never tried it get it and pick it up at Costco because actually they're doing it the right way. They're getting it from Carneros. Um, and it's really a beautiful grape. It's very drinkable. I've met a lot of people now that didn't like red wine and they've had Pinot for the first time. It actually is a very good introduction to red wine. Explain so, where Carneros is. So Carneros is a region in in the area of Napa Valley in Southern or Northern California. So it's just a specific small tiny region and what what makes it great for growing Pinot is it's got dense fog, it's cooler, cooler climate, and it's got, again, that hard soil that forces the Pinot. Pinot needs to be forced into becoming a great grape for mm -hmm. wine. And when you do it the right way, that's when you develop something really lovely. If, you, if you're not growing it in the right region where you've got the right climate and the right soil, 
it's just gonna become something that it really it shouldn't be. It's almost like the grape, grape juice. Lazy. It's it's horrible. Yeah, it's a lazy, yeah. it's a lazy way to grow it, and really, it's not good. What's interesting to me is the the look of a Pinot Noir mm -hmm. compared to other reds. I mean, this is like a like kind of a light purple mm -hmm. as as compared to the other two. I know we're gonna see have that the deep, rich redness. This is just this is. Yeah. Delicate and artistic. Yes, and that is what a Pinot is. It's it's a purpley red, but you can see through it. So mm -hmm. it's got this pearlescence. There's no tannins in it like you would find in a Cabernet. So it's not rich and chewy. It's very light. It's very delicate as you described it. And okay, let's good. try it with a salmon. And what we've done here is we squeeze a little lemon on the top. And we like a lot of lemon, but do it obviously according to your taste, but it's good with a bit of lemon. And then we sprinkle it with capers. Um, you can pick both lemons and capers mm -hmm. up from Costco. And, and this we is like a the smoked salmon capers. from Costco. Yeah, this is a smoked mm -hmm. salmon. We like wild salmon because if you're going to eat salmon and be healthy, get the wild. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want farm raised. It's just not, it's not healthy. I'm giving this one to you. Did you wash your hands? No. No? Okay. <laughs> I never wash my hands. Why do I need to do that? I'm, I'm perfectly clean all the time. With the Costco salmon, it's very, um, it's very fresh, and I, I think it actually goes really well with this. It goes fabulously. With it's it. great. Yeah. Uh, it, honestly, we're, we're just sitting here talking it. about salmon. We didn't even mention. <laughs> By the way, it goes fabulous. With it, it goes great with yeah. it. The caper gives it a little salty mm -hmm. bite. We like the large ones because they're not as mm -hmm. salty. So um, that's why it's better. I think going with the Pinot, the lemon. You would just put just enough. It just adds a little acidity, mm -hmm. um, which balances the fruit and the pinot out very nicely. So, uh, as far as the cheese, which one are you going to try? Um, I think I would actually like to try the Asiago. That was the one I was going to try. Again, you're always copying yes. me. So I thought the Asiago. It's you know it's nutty, um, but it's not too overpowering. Hmm. Oh. That's great with that. We were right. We were right over time. Right. Mm -hmm. Not really, but <laughs> we no like to time. say. <laughs> no such thing. You know, I actually want to try for the last uh, drop uh, the prosciutto with provolone. Okay. I think that'll be good with it. Mm. No. That's really like good. Like it. Goes, it goes the, the, good. This Pinot Noir stands up. Oh, it really does. Yeah. yeah. No, it's 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 an excellent Pinot Noir. And this is our first time tasting it. Mm -hmm. So we're very pleasantly surprised because, as we said before, we're very wary. <laughs> Even though it's, you know, Cordero's and blah, 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 we're still wary. But tasting it, we can vouch for it. It's excellent. It really is. It's delicious Pinot Noir. Give me a small piece of the uh, blue cheese. <clears throat> and if you can, please use the right knife. Wow. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now, do you want it on a cracker, or are you just going to have the cheese on its I'm own? I'm just going to have a cheese on the own. On, on its own, sorry. Okay. There you go. All right. Well, I'm, I don't have any wine, so I can't try it with the blue cheese. <laughs> we can solve that. Somebody needs to pour a little more wine for me. Okay. Mmm. Okay, I love this blue cheese. Like we discussed last time. Costco blue cheese, yeah. It's not the dirty sock blue cheese. No. It's really delicious. Just the right amount of tang. Like a very mild blue cheese, really, I would call it. And similar, it's really similar to a Gorgonzola almost. Yes, and no sweaty athletic socks that have been sitting in a hamper for a month. Oh, that actually goes great with this. Yeah, and this stands up to it. Mm-hmm, so it does, really. I mean, so honestly. My fear was at first was, not to get that because it might it might kind of drown it out. It doesn't actually it mm -hmm. enhances it yeah, really it really, really nicely. Mm -hmm. I think it's the tanginess and that brings out the the fruit of the pinot. Mm -hmm. It's very delicious. We are moving on to our Malbec. Okay. Now this is from the Mendoza region in Argentina. 
and here they're they're known for Malbec. Costco again goes to the right region. Mm -hmm. And what the other thing I like about it is on the back they have a detailed description. They kind of give you their ideas and what they were doing. Um, here it tells you even Mendoza province is located at the foothills of the Andes Mountains. So things like that. Um, it talks about the altitude. It talks about where the orchards and the vineyards are, um, how it's a quiet place in the Andes. And so all of these things really go into what we call terroir. And that's what makes up the flavor of the grape. This is a, this mm. is, this is a what I would call a sturdy wine where it's in baseball terms it's it's the it's the guy that can hit a home run for you every now and then but it's the guy who will put the ball in the gap and steal a base for you at the same time too this mm -hmm. has just got so many different elements to it and it's not overpowering yet it's not it's not sweet and light by any means um, it's got a really nice fruit flavor mm -hmm. you really get the black fruit there Malbec goes great with steaks you know as Absolutely. well as, as cabs do um, and you, you kind of it's it's funny because it's got a lot of fruit forwardness similar to a Zinfandel mm -hmm. I would almost say not as much but similar vein um, mm -hmm. obviously if you're having some kind of Brazilian steak um, I think it holds up really well to chimichurri kinds of sauces mm -hmm. and other spicy sauces yeah. it's a good red wine to pair mm -hmm. with some spicy stuff because of the fruit in it the fruit flavors but what cheese do you want to pair this with? Um, I think I'm going to go with the brie. Oh, that's an interesting The brie choice. sounds, you know, just feels like it's going to give me a little bit, uh, a little bit more body, mm -hmm. and it's going to stand up to it. I like it. And this brie again is from Costco from Normandy, so a French mm -hmm. brie. Uh, I can't remember what we paid for it. I want to say it was like eight dollars yeah. for a big wheel. I mean, this is only one third of it that you're seeing right here um it's fabulous with the brie it reminds me of um again it's not a cab but it reminds me when i have a steak with a great cab i just my calvary gland go and i just it's mm. just and it gives you it. that that fullness of a lot of different things going on i almost like to try it with a brie wrapped up in a puff pastry and, and baked in the oven for a little bit and warmed up that'd be really good like on a winter's day would you be curious enough to actually try the salmon with the Malbec of course <laughs> well I, one of the things I think you need to do is you need to experiment with being able to talk to everybody and tell them while you're also getting me some salmon because you're just talking and I'm sitting here deprived of salmon my salivary I'm hands sorry just going nuts so. all right here you go so, this is good. Now you didn't cut it with a cheese knife or anything like that, did you? No, I wouldn't do that because you need to use your cheese knife for the cheese. It's been designated for. specific for. cheeses. Don't yes. go, don't stray to just, another cheese. Exactly, just like the wine glass. Okay. This one's for Pinot, this one's for Malbec, that's Bordeaux. This is knife is for the blue cheese, that one's for the Asiago everything in its place it makes sense <laughs> all right what's the the verdict on the salmon oh look the malbec really nice um i i i think the malbec overpowers the salmon just a little bit if you like that makes salmon sense. taste mm -hmm. on the other hand there's some people who might not like that overly oily taste of a salmon and it might take it away from it so um, yeah, it does good, overpower it, but it's not a bad combination, mm. to be mm. honest. I mean, you, you can do it. Huh. They don't really complement each other, but but it's not bad. Mm -hmm. What would you choose next? Because I'm looking, I'm looking at all five of the cheeses there, and I'm going like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, all yeah. seem like they would go good with this, mm -hmm. to be honest. I really think every single cheese is going to go great with this wine. I actually really wanted to try the blue cheese with it. Well, let's go with the blue cheese. Then. Okay. Um, but let's try the other one. To, let's okay. try this one first, because I think it's, you know, we haven't had this yet in this show. Actually, that's that's really good, because yeah, you get that. goes good. The, uh, the crunchiness mm -hmm. of that. Nutty dish. That is just so... And you know what? Here's my dessert idea, especially mm -hmm. if you're trying to not eat a lot Sweet of sugar. Sweet sugar, yeah. Exactly. I would have either this Parmesan with this for dessert, 
or the blue cheese with this. Although we haven't yeah. tried it, I'm just kind of anticipating it's going to be no, good. No, let's do it. Let's let's do a little blue cheese. And please use the right knife. Well, I'm the one cutting the cheese. Oh, here, I'll here. Try to use this here. No. No. That's the brie knife. Oh, put it back. Sorry. Put put the knife down. <laughs> Step away from the cheese. <laughs> I will even hand it to you on the knife oh instead God. of with my fingers. And I will not touch Like the I knife. usually do. Mm. I Actually, love that. it's really nice. The blue cheese overpowers the Malbec just a little bit. You, you, you lose a little bit, but the Malbec gets really smooth. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's so even it's smoother. It's very smooth. And then on the aftertaste, the back end, it's like that's where you get the great combination of the two together. I'm almost mm. convinced that this blue cheese almost that's makes everything fabulous. go good with it. That that's how good that blue cheese is, mm -hmm. and that's a blue cheese from Costco. Yeah, and and so like you know, I don't know that I would pair this with a Stilton because that's almost like too blue mm -hmm. of a cheese that needs support. Basically, that's mm -hmm. a classic combination. But this blue cheese that's mm -hmm. mild with that, I, I love it. All right, so we're doing this last Welcome one because this is this is this is named after a uh, non-English speaking physician because it's Nidoc. Oh God! No, I can't believe you came up with that. Where do you get these things from? <laughs> it's it's a man who is really not that uh, well versed in wine, <laughs> especially red wine. So he starts coming up with things like that. So, oh, mm, so smells good. Okay, I call it Medoc. So it's but Medoc. 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 Yes. Medoc. Medoc is a region of Bordeaux where this uh, particular <clears throat> wine is grown the grapes from. Um, and that was really bad grammar, but you know, I'm not writing, I'm speaking, so. <laughs> well, but it's called Medoc, so. <laughs> it's Medoc. And what happens in France that we've talked about before is that the wine is named after the region, not the grape. As in California, you have grapes that are wines. So Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, uh, Pinot Noir, whatever it happens to be, Chardonnay. In France, Chardonnay would be Chablis or Burgundy. That's where it comes from. That's where they grow the grapes. So Bordeaux primarily grows Cabernet Sauvignon. So most Bordeaux's are primarily Cabernet Sauvignon, but all Bordeaux's are a blend of different grapes. Mm -hmm. This one happens to be, I think, 68% Cab. The rest is Merlot, like what we were talking about before. We are drinking Merlot. <laughs> it's such a great blending grape and it complements the cab so well because cabs have tannins mm -hmm. merlot you know not so much so the merlot brings this great chocolatey silky depth and the cab brings the rich chewy tanniny part um i haven't even tasted it yet but it smells fabulous what do you think the smell is good um the taste is mm -hmm. is good as well but now that you've had it i would say mm -hmm. i don't think i would have this as what I would call a sipping wine. Oh, but not I would at all. Definitely have Need it with this food. with food. Yeah. Any kind of other rich dish, a, even a rich pasta dish or a pizza, would go yeah. great with this. Let's do that. Let's try it with the brie. Okay, I'm not going to say it, but that's exactly what I was going to pick first. Oh, of course. <laughs> I mean, I'm just thinking it's it's an interesting idea, but I think it'll go well. And again, you know, I you love know, Brie, pairing things Brie's, Brie's from French. the same places and regions. So, you know, last time we had the Italian wine with the Italian cheese. That went really well. Now we're going to have Brie from France. We're going to combine Normandy and Bordeaux. Who would have thought that? But here you go. Mm, mm. Right. Ooh, that's interesting. It really brings out mushroomy, earthy flavor of the Brie. That I have never gotten from any you know, of these other wines with the brie. Mm -hmm. Let's let's go with the uh, the goat cheese, which has the fig in it. Mm. Uh, okay. I figured you'd want a cracker. Yeah. Yeah. Of course you figured that. I'm just. I'm sorry. I'm so caught up with that brie and Bordeaux. That actually was delicious. Mm. 
if you umami. Want. That's the word. I'm sorry. That's what I was trying to think of. It's like an umami flavor. The brie and the Bordeaux together is Explain. like an umami flavor. Explain. Well, umami is the is the definition of mushroomy, <clears throat> earthy, uh, gritty thing. Oh, yeah. That's what I was trying to describe. Yeah. It's like the other <clears throat> flavor. There's four basic flavors, you know, salty, sweet, sour, mm -hmm. and bitter. And then umami is like the fifth one. It's kind of like the fifth element that just came up that all of a sudden <clears throat> people are designating as another Or as we call it in here in America, bite. yo mama. <laughs> um, the, <clears throat> the fig kind of gets an extra, <laughs> an extra boost. Yeah. Um, I think the... The sweetness of the fig in the goat cheese actually drowns out the fruit in the Bordeaux, mm -hmm. and and you're really tasting the tannins in the Bordeaux now. So it might um, be a little too much. I think so, okay. but you know what? I would pair a regular goat cheese with the Bordeaux. That I think could hold up. Um, mm, I like that. So, <clears throat> so we've we've done the three wines. We've we've had the cheeses that we've we've chosen. If people are going to do this at home, um, there, there, there's, there's a little bit of a method to this. Well, you want to taste your wines from lightest to most full-bodied. So basically, the Pinot is the lightest, Malbec medium, and the, the Bordeaux was, it, this was an easy choice. Bordeaux was obviously going to be the most full-bodied, um, and, and because of the tannins, you always want something like that to go last. You know, if you make a mistake or screw up, nobody is gonna care. No. It's just, you know, just have the wine party. <laughs> That's the whole key to the whole thing. That's the best part Just do it. it. And and as you're doing it, you're learning. It's been great, this has been a lot of fun. Again, we we did a white wine show <clears throat> on, on the Costco wines. Uh, this is a red wine show. If, if you have an idea or something you would like us to to cover and to do, we'd, we'd be more than happy to. And the best way to get in touch with us is through Twitter at UC Foodie TV. Put in the hashtag undercover jet setter. And send us like your photos, your recipes, your favorite cheeses, your favorite wines. If you have a wine party, send us photos, let us know what happened. And we would love to come out and see you if we can. That'd be great. Yeah, we'd enjoy it. Cheers. Well, thank you very much. Cheers.